Hello, well, friends. Today we're going to be learning the C scale. We're going to start learning our scales with the circle of fifths. On this video, we're going to learn the C scale. Next video, we're going to go to the G scale, then the D scale, A scale, E scale, B scale, F sharp scale, C sharp scale. Then we're going to go back to the C scale and then go in the order of flats. So we're going to go from C to F scale, B flat scale, E flat scale, A flat scale, and then D flat scale is the same thing as the C sharp scale. Almost the same thing on the piano, they're the same thing. Technically they're not the same thing, but yes they are, but they're not. Okay, so with the C scale we're going to start with, with the C, all natural notes. C natural, D natural, E natural, F natural, G natural, A natural, B natural and C natural. So there's eight notes in the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have our eight notes. We start on the low C and then on the high C. But on the Itaron, since we play in octaves, we end on the same note we started on. Since we play it in octaves, in two strings at a time, it sounds like this. But since we play it in octaves, it sounds like this. Okay, remember when we play the C scale? We're going to start with the open C string, and we can match the octave, the lower octave C, on the A string, the, the low A string, we're going to push with our thumb. If you're still not used to where to do it, you're still learning your positions, a good way to always find a good spot, you're going to come in with your hand at an angle like this, coming, coming like this. So that way when you push down on the strings, your hands, your fingers point towards you, not back there. Some guitar home players when they're learning, instead of pushing their fingers, their fingers at an angle, as you see on the video. They tend to want to make it like a fret line almost. makes it, especially for the F, imagine, instead of doing this, you're going to have to do this, and I see people trying to do that, it makes it really hard. So you come in at an angle, you can always feel on your index finger, the nut touching your finger. Now your thumb is always going to land in the correct spot, but that's what we're practicing for, to get used to all that. So we start with this C lower C, make sure that, that the octaves are tuned, make sure it's not too low, that does not match, make sure it's not too high, that does not match, you want to match the octaves. From there we're going to go to the D, we can use the open D string, and with our middle finger, Pointing towards you, you're gonna push down, should automatically land in the right position. Remember, you wanna tune the octave, if it's too low, it's gonna sound. If it's too high, it's gonna sound. There you go. Now for the E, we're gonna use our ring finger and our middle finger from the D we're going to twist we're going to add our ring finger twist them a little bit this way our open E string and the D string pushing to make it an E you can always match those octaves
tuned up my guitarron and was out of tune. Strings completely loose. So, bear with me. There you go. That sounds better. E string, match with the low octave. Not too low, not too high. Now, from here, we're gonna shift to F. We're gonna keep those fingers in that position, just slide them over. check your tuning for your F. You can put your first finger on the E string to make an F. If it's correctly tuned, you should hear the perfect force with the C. If it's too low, it's going to sound nasty. If it's too high, it's going to sound nasty also. octave and you're good to go. You can always also check. You should be able to hear those, those perfect fifths. F, C, F, C, F, C, F, C. If you happen to pull up all three strings at the same time, F, C, F. You have a power chord. Now for G, it's very simple the open G string by itself. Now we go to the A strings, both open A strings. That makes your A. Now for the B, you're gonna match the octaves, low B, and a high B. Another way to check the tuning on that too, Wherever your D is, imagine there was an imaginary fret line. That's where your E was. That's also where you're gonna be, your B is gonna be. Make sure you hear those octaves, both strings. The more solid you push with your left hand, the louder your instrument is gonna sound. And we end on the eighth note, which is C is the first note we started on. So the scale has eight notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we end on the note we started with because on the guitarron we played in octaves. If we played it single strings, it would be C, D, E, F, G, Since we played on octaves, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, C, B, A, G, F, B, B, C. There you go. Thank you. In arpeggio, you can practice also. C, E, G, C, G, E, C, E, G, C, G, E, C, F, A, C. first, the third, the fifth, and the octave. That's the arpeggio for the key of C. C, E, G. Now, when we go to C, F, A, C, A, F, C, we're doing an arpeggio for the, for the F chord, which is the fourth chord in the scale. C, D, E, F. It's the fourth chord in the scale. Now the F arpeggio is F, A, C. So now for this one, we're inverting, starting from C, going up to F, A, 
C, and then back down to A, back down to F, back down to C. So if you're looking at the C scale, from there you're doing the first note of the scale, the fourth, the sixth, and the octave, back down to the sixth, to the fourth, and to the first. And that is for your fourth quarter pedio. For the C arpeggio was C, E, G, C, which is the first, the third, the fifth, and the octave. Now we're going to do an arpeggio for the fifth, seventh, the dominant, but we're going to invert it starting from the B, go to the D, F, G, F, G, B. So for the fifth, seventh, it's a G seventh, it's G, B, D, F. It's one, three, five, seventh of G chord. B, D, F, G, F, G, B. But if you're looking at the C scale, we're actually playing the seventh note, the second, the fourth, and the fifth. 